Now we're going to take a look at how to do calculations inside of the edit text boxes here. Almost every box that you can enter a number in, you can also do a calculation in. So we're going to go to this chart I made here. I made this chart you can download below and you can print this out if you like. And in here I show you examples of different calculations you can do. You can do addition, subtraction, uh, multiplication, division, and you can use any of these variables down here below and do uh, either simple or complex con calculations inside the text box. So for example, if you use the W or the X key, that would be your material width. If you do the H or the Y key, that'll be your material height. And you can see if you do H times four, so if your height was five inches and you did H times four, then it'd be five times four and that would equal 20. And we do have the same thing for the thickness. This would be the material thickness. You can use the letter T or the letter Z. Uh, for the pi symbol here, you can use the letter P. If you want to convert metric into imperial, use the letter I. And then the same thing, if you want to convert imperial to metric, use the letter M. And if you want to do feet, use the apostrophe. Now we'll show you some examples inside the Vetric software. Let's go back to there. Now when you're setting up your job here, you can enter in whatever width, height, and thickness your material is. So in this case, we're going to do 20 inches by 20 inches by 3 quarters of an inch thick. And then we're going to come down here to OK. Now our job's set up for that size. Now let's say, for example, we want to do a rectangle. Now let's say if we wanted to put the rectangle in the ex exact center of our material, there's several ways you can do that, but I'm going to show you how to do it with the calculations. So to start, you want to center your anchor point to the center of your bounding box here. Now if we take our X anchor point and we take this and erase what's in there now. Now let's type in the letter X. That'll be the variable for the width of our material which is the 20 inches that we entered earlier. Now if you use the divide symbol, now type in the number two. So what that's gonna do is X divided by two. So that's gonna be 20 divided by two because that's what we entered in our job setup. It was 20 inches wide. Now to complete this calculation, click the equal sign on your keyboard. And now you can see that it turns up with number 10. If we do the same thing for the Y, you can enter Y divided by 2, or you can also, if we erase this, you can do H. H is also represented by the height of our material. So if we do H divided by 2, type in equals, and we also get 10 there as well because this is 20 inches. Now if we come down here to our width of our rectangle, we're going to be drawing here. You can select this, and we'll erase that. And let's say if we wanted the rectangle to be one third the width of our material. So we can type in X here for our material width, and then we'll do divide, and then by number three, and now type in equals. Now that's gonna be one third of our material width. Now if we come down here to the rectangle height, let's erase this. Now let's say if we wanted the height to be one quarter of our material height. So we could do the letter Y for our material height and then divide by four and then type in equals and that'll give us our value there. And now we click create. And now we have a perfectly centered rectangle. The width of our rectangle is one third the width of our material and the height of the rectangle is one-fourth of our material height. And then we can come down here and click close. And those calculations aren't only for drawing shapes. If we also come down here, we can go to the scale tool. If we select that rectangle we just created. And now we can come over here. Let's unlink the X and Y. 
let's say if we wanted to take the height and multiply it by two. So if we just do the multiplication symbol and then number two and click equals. And now you can see five times two equals 10. Just click apply. And now that created our rectangle 10 inches high. And then we can also do addition and, sub and subtraction. Let's say we want to take the width. Let's add two inches. So plus two, click the equal sign. Now that just added two inches, click apply. And now it's two inches wider. And then the same thing for subtraction. Let's say if we take the height, subtract using the minus symbol, number one for one inch, click equals. Now 10 minus one equals nine, click apply. And now our height is one inch shorter. Now let's close this out. And let's delete this rectangle. And if we go back to our chart, we can see we use the W and the X for the material width. We use the H and the Y for material height. The next one we have here is material thickness. You can use that by using the letter T or the letter Z. Now these variables are more commonly used when you're creating toolpaths. So uh, I'll show you how to do that. Let's go back to VCarve here. Let's go over to our toolpath tab. And let's say if we were creating a pocket, we'll go to the pocket toolpath. And for the cut depth, we can select this. And if you want to go all the way through your material, just type in the letter Z for our material thickness, and then just type the equal sign. And now you can see that it'll insert the material thickness that we specified in our job setup. And that's good if you forget what your material thickness was, you can just type that in very quickly. And that way you don't set your toolpath too deep. And then another thing we could do, let's erase this. You can also type in the letter T for material thickness. It's the same thing as the letter Z. And let's say if we wanted to cut a pocket halfway through our material. So if we do the letter T, the divide symbol, number two for doing in half, and then type in the equal sign. And now you can see we get 0.375. So that'd be three eighths of an inch which is half of our three quarter inch material. So these are just some easy ways to do some calculations in your cut depth box here. So now if we go back down, let's click close. Let's go back to our 2D drawing tab and let's go back to our chart. And you can see the, the next one we have here is the letter P. That'll give you the pi value. Now this one isn't used too often, but it's there if you need it. For example here, we have the area of a radius circle. So the formula for that is pi times radius squared. So this is how you'd enter it here. Let's go back to our Vetric software. So let's go to the circle tool here. Let's switch it to radius. Let's do a five inch radius. And we're just gonna click in the center here. Now we have a five inch radius circle, which would be 10 inches in diameter. And now if you wanted to figure out the area inside of the circle, we can use our calculation box here. Let's type in the letter P for the pi and use the multiplication symbol. So times, and now we're gonna do the radius of that circle we just entered, which is a five inch radius. And now we have to square that number and to do that, hold in your shift key and hit the number six. That'll give you this symbol here to square. And now type in the number two. So now we have the formula pi times the radius, which is five. And then we're gonna square that. And then now type in the equal sign. And now you get this number here. And that'll be the area inside the circle in inches. And like I said, uh, there's not too many times you use that formula, but if you need it, it's there. And there is an easier way 
to get the radius of your circle. We can check this number here, 78.5. Let's close this. Let's go to our measure tool here. And if we go to span and then select our circle and we come down here, you can see the vector area 78.5. And that's the number we got when we did the formula as well. So like I said, it's easier to find out the area inside this tool here, but if you needed the pi calculation for anything, you can use the letter P when you're doing your calculations. Now let's delete this circle and go back to our chart. The next two we have here is imperial conversion and metric conversion. So these are if you want to convert inches to metric or metric to inches. So let's go back to our metric software. Now we can go back to our circle tool. And this time we're going to switch to a diameter. And let's erase this number here. And now let's say we're creating a design that requires a 10 millimeter hole. Now since our job setup wasn't done in inches, all of our default values are going to be in inches. So we're going to have to convert 10 millimeters to inches. So to do that, type in the number 10 in our box here. And if we click create, that's going to create a 10 inch circle. So we want that converted from metric to inches. So to do that, do the time symbol and do the letter I. And that's going to take 10 inches and convert it from metric to imperial. Now type in the equal sign. And you can see we get 0.3937. That's the imperial equivalent to 10 millimeters. Let's click create. And now we have a 10 millimeter circle there, but it was converted to inches. And then you can do the same thing to convert back to millimeters by taking a number and use the time symbol. And then this time you type in the letter M to convert to metric, type in the equal sign you can see we get 9.99998. That's because when it converted to inches, it rounded to the fourth decimal place. So when you convert it back to metric, it's going to get close, but not exact. But you can always take this and erase that and just type in number 10. But those are just quick ways to convert metric to inches very quickly or vice versa. Now let's close this out. Let's go back to our chart one more time. And our last variable here is the apostrophe, which stands for feet. So you can see we can do, we can convert feet to inches. So let's go back to our Vetric software. Let's go to the rectangle tool again. And let's say we're creating a design. Let's select our width here. We'll erase this. And let's say we were creating a design that was one feet, four inches. So you can convert that in your head real quick, or a simple way to do it is just type in the number one here for feet, type in the apostrophe, and now that stands for one foot. And now let's do the addition symbol. And then we want to do four inches. So type in the number four. So now the equation we have here is one foot plus four inches. Now type in the equal sign and that equals 16 inches. And we can keep our height the same and now click create. And now we have a rectangle that is 16 inches wide or also it would be one feet and four inches. So that's a quick way if you have a design that's laid out in feet, you can quickly convert it to inches. And then in addition to doing these simple equations here, you can also do more complex equations. I'll show you how to do that real quick here. Let's go to our rectangle tool. Let's take our width and let's erase that. And now we could, we could do a more complex equation here. Let's do X divided by two. So if we type the equal sign, that'll divide our width by two. 
But before we finish this, you can add more to this. Let's do plus six. So what that's going to do is take our material width, divide it by two, and then after it does that, it's going to add six more inches. Let's type in equals. We get 16 inches because we took 20 divided by two, which would have been 10 inches. And then we added six more additional inches. We got 16 inches. And then if you click create, that's going to create that rectangle there. So you can see you could do many different equations inside of all your number boxes here. So that gives you many possibilities and allows you to quickly add, subtract, multiply, divide, or convert within the boxes here. And that way you could do it right here in the Vetrix software and don't have to keep using a calculator.